And tonight I want to go to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I want to talk about Josh Gaddis. Josh Gaddis is the offensive coordinator at Michigan. And I think about Michigan right now. I always think about programs that are making changes, sort of like I do a firecracker. And you can think about the different kinds. I mean, if you grew up where I'm from and knew that there was a fireworks stand on pretty much every corner, if you go across the river into Alabama, now they're legal in Georgia, but they used to not be, you would look at the different fuses. And not all fuses are alike. Some of them, you light them, and you got to get out of there really quick. And it doesn't take long from the time that you light that fuse to the time that something goes bang. Other times, you light that fuse, and it takes a little while. It's longer. It's got a little more burn length on it. And then sometimes you light one, and then you go hide behind the log, and you got the fingers in the ears, if you're soft, and nothing ever happens, and it just fizzles. And that's the same way a program is. That's the same way a change at offensive coordinator is. I think Josh Gaddis is one of the very most important people in college football in 2020, but I'm telling you right now, we have seen his hiring – his first season was last year. It had some, I think, promising results down the stretch, second half, let's say, of Michigan season. Everyone's sitting around waiting and wondering, how long is the fuse? Is it going to go bang? Is our offense at Michigan going to go bang? And if it is, is it a three-year deal? Is it as soon as he starts his second year, even though we're replacing a quarterback and we're replacing four offensive linemen and we got uncertainty here and there, is it just going to go bang anyway? Is the cumulative effect of this system taking root going to overrule all that? That's what they're wondering. That's what I'm wondering right along with you at Michigan. So what I think we do know is I think people are pretty fed up with status quo. Now, this is not a criticized Jim Harbaugh segment. I think even the supporters of Jim Harbaugh probably look around and say, okay, now, while I'm not piling on this guy, we're six years in here now, it's time the program makes the next step. We're better than we were when he got here. That's the definition of improvement. We've gotten better. But now we want to be up there, and we're not up there yet. And offense is what's holding us back making big plays, stretching the field, people fearing the product that we put on the field offensively, that doesn't exist. It needs to exist. Now, Jim Harbaugh, to his credit, understood the problem and thinks he found the solution. Solution, like I said, it's not always light it and it goes bang. Sometimes it takes a little while. So for all we know, as I've detailed a couple of times in the last month or so on this show, for all we know, the changes that need to be made at Michigan have already been made. Maybe that change is Josh Gaddis. Maybe he, in turn, is going to implement a culture and an offensive system that goes bang this year. And it goes bang on the recruiting trail. And all of a sudden, Michigan looks totally different from 2023 and beyond than it has to this point in Jim Harbaugh's tenure. I was over earlier today on our 24-7 Sports Michigan site, themichiganinsider.com. Really fun place. Really good conversation over there. And I did what sometimes I do if I know I'm going to talk about something on that night's show. I value your opinion on your team more than I value my opinion. You, most cases, know more about your team than I do. I may have some nuggets here and there I pick up through connections, but you follow this day to day. So I wanted to know from the horses' mouths, what are your expectations? Michigan's offense, number one, and Josh Gaddis overall, number two, what do you want to see from him this year? And there were several really well-thought-out, well-articulated responses, but the general theme was explosive plays. That's where we got to get better. I mean, yes, we've got question marks along the O-line. Yes, we've got question marks at quarterback. But bottom line is, aside from personnel, offensively, we got to be able to stretch the field. We don't make big plays. No one cares. We shrink the field on ourselves before any defense does it on us. I agree with all that. And I agree. Listen, I agree it'll be shaky early. They've got a game at Washington to start the season. There's a lot of, you know, overturning chairs out in Washington, too, new staff. So, Find a way. I don't care if you win it 3-2. to two. Auburn and Mississippi State had a 3-2 to two game a generation ago. Just win that one. But every week that we go through that they can stay undefeated this year and get one more week's worth of practice and get one more game under their belt, they hopefully get closer and closer to an offensive product that is viable. And despite having a new quarterback and despite having four offensive linemen, if you look deeper – Here's what I hope. What I hope is at some point in 2020, not 21 and beyond, 2020, we're looking and we're saying, you know what? I remember reading a preview magazine about Michigan this year, and I remember watching the preview and prediction shows, and no one picked this team to do much of anything, and it's because they were talking about 
don't know who the quarterback's going to be, don't know what they're going to have there, all these new starters on the offensive line. But you know what happened? As it turns out, the new system had taken root and it ended up offsetting all of these question marks we had. That's a perfect world. That's where you hope you are at some point this year with Michigan. But whether it's Dylan McCaffrey, whether it's Joe Milton, for those unfamiliar, those are the two guys vying for this quarterback position. It's probably McCaffrey. Look, I don't know. I know you guys have your opinion on that. Irrelevant, my opinion, here's what I want to know. Whoever it is, or maybe they use both of them a fair amount, whatever it is at quarterback, I just want to know, what is the quarterback production this year relative to the potential of the quarterback position? That's going to tell me what I need to know long term. I mean, you have a maximum potential for any football player on any team. Quarterback's no different at Michigan. No different. So you put Dylan McCaffrey on the field. Is it the same thing that we said at times with Shea Patterson where we're watching and we, we just, man, I know that we and he are capable of so much more. Where is it? Don't know. If we're still saying that, now, if we're still saying that next year, then you start to lose confidence. But right now, I think a lot of people are brimming with confidence. And I think Jim Harbaugh is included among that group because I think that he believes he made the right move. And for his sake, I hope he did.